What's up, you guys? It's Adana. So recently, I had the opportunity to go speak at Temple University's pre-PA club. Shout out to Temple University for allowing me to come out and speak to you guys. I had an amazing time, and I wanted to share that time with you all. So I hope you enjoy the video. So what are they doing right now? They are doing sample PA school interview questions. So they're asking three like simple PA questions that you would get in PA school. Like, so why did you want to be a PA? Um, if you weren't a PA or if you didn't have medicine, what would you do? I don't I remember that third one. <laughs> Yeah, eat them cookies, eat them cookies. Eat them cookies. <laughs> Please give a warm welcome to our guest speaker, Donna. She's known as Donna the PA on YouTube. Yeah. You guys are pretty much at the PA class right now. There's a bunch of females and like five males. And that's typically what you see in PA school anyways. Um, so the males kind of have an upper hand because we want more men in the PA profession. So they typically like get into PA school. I know when I was interviewing and I saw a guy, I was like, oh man, I know he's getting in, and he did. So <laughs> I was right. But, so that's me, Adana, MPAM. You see that little PAC right there? Yes, that's me. Um, about me, who am I? So gaining healthcare experience, there are different types of healthcare experience. It can be um, PCE or HCE, which is you know direct patient care experience or healthcare experience. So healthcare experience is anything in the healthcare field. So you can be a front desk worker at um, you know your doctor's office. Uh, you can be a security guard. I was that at a nursing home for a little while. Uh, so all of that goes under healthcare experience. But when it comes to patient care experience, that's what PA school is really looking for. So are you? you know, taking uh, vital signs, are you doing injections, uh, do you know how to start lines? So you take your entrance exam, I just did a YouTube video on this, there's a new PA entrance exam that is launching this May, it's called the PA CAT. Um, generally you would take the GRE, some schools will allow you to do the MCAT, but like that's quickly fading away. It's mainly the GRE and there's also another exam called the CASPER. CASPER is not really like knowledge based, it's more so like situational. So like um, you are a PA, your attendant asks you to like treat their girlfriend that they're having an affair with and then she goes home and all of a sudden now she dies, like who's to blame for her death type of thing. So like yeah, you see a lot and the scribes knew like a ton of stuff. Like they knew how to treat like patients coming in with like CVAs and things. And I'm like, what? You know, like, cause I'm sitting up here like a CNA, I'm like, well, I can give you ibuprofen, but you know, they're like, they're like, they're like, in it because they're in the ED, right? Like I, I looked at certified nurse midwife and I didn't like the nursing model. Um, so I was like, well, what else is there? And I found the PA profession. 
<laughs> and apply to as many as you can you can afford. I mean, it's not cheap. It's fifty five dollars a program. It's one hundred and seventy five dollars for the first program, and then fifty five subsequent dollars after that. So I mean, that money like racks up. People spend like hundreds of dollars applying to PA programs. But again, like that app will might shrink your load down. So you might think like, okay, I'm gonna just apply to all the schools in Pennsylvania because I want to stay in Pennsylvania but you may only be eligible to apply to two programs. So you applying to 12 schools and you're only eligible for two, that's just a waste of $550. So I'm excited about that. So you can take vacations and you know sip on some like little virgin cocktails. <laughs> um, you know, and you don't even have to take PTO time. So like, I'm excited about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, just suck it up. <laughs> like, no, like honestly, like you wanna be a peer, right? So like, you're going like this, like this is like, this is the easy part, honestly, you know, because you're gonna have people's lives in your hand, you know, depending on the type of PA that you're gonna be. So at the end of the day, like maybe like kind of just compartmentalize yourself. So, you know, in your senior year, if you're trying to go direct into PA school, make sure that you have all of the healthcare hours and the experience and everything that you need for CASPA so that as soon as CASPA opens up in April, because CASPA is opening up in April, so for all you seniors who are trying to get in for next year, um, you have to like send that application in like in May or June because you want to be ahead of the game. Did you subscribe? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> And, and everybody in here, I need to have like 50 new subscribers on YouTube and Instagram, okay? So so you don't say like, I want to be able to dip in different, different specialties, but you say you like like the lateral movement that PAs have. Um, and that's not taboo at all. Like I use that all the time. But you know, that's, I mean, people know that that's what you want. You want to be able to laterally move to various different specialties. And you also like the time that you have with your family or the free time that you have. Um, and it's not as stressful, so that's fine to address those. Like most people say that in their program, their personal statement. So that's where you yourself now, like you rank your schools, right? So if you have a 3.4 or 3.3, and the average, which is a mean, is 3.5, then you know that they're still admitting students with 3.3s and 3.4s, and they're admitting students with 4.0s and 3.7s. So if you look at that and you see like, okay, I may not be hitting the GPA, but I have more hours than their average matriculated student, or my personal statement is so bomb, like I know I'm gonna get this interview, like then apply but you you rank your schools it's it's almost like a med school match so you're like all right so i have 10 schools that i can apply to this is where i fall on each of them i'm going to apply to this school first and this school last because then that way you're not losing anything you're just applying to the schools that you're better suited for earlier